everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today, we are talking about my five favorite top five freight... Top five favorite Chuck Palahniuk books. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, divisive <laughs> subject. I know it is, especially because uh, a certain book isn't on the list. I don't want to give any spoilers, but we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Also, like right off the bat, this one of my favorite books is one of his most hated. Um, oddly enough, uh, I don't know why. I don't know why people don't like it as much as I do, um, but they're free to feel however they want about Damned. This is a story about a teenage girl who ends up going to hell, and hell is a landscape that is populated by giants that is <laughs> that has whole sea, I think it's like a, a river of semen. Um, it's just a very bizarre, wacky book. And I loved every minute of it. Um, one of the things that I liked about it, the currency in hell is candy bars. Um, <laughs> as a fat kid, I thought that was supremely cool. Um, but I think what I liked the most about the book is how funny it was. It was it was a return to form for Polinick in that it made me laugh again. And the a couple few books before this one didn't. Um, it's not that I didn't see the point of them, it's just that he took the experimentation side of things too far with things like Pygmy and Snuff and Tell All, and I wasn't a fan of those books. And I, I, I also like the sequel to this one, Doomed. Um, I didn't like it as much, but I did still like it. Um, Doom picks up right where this one leaves off, but if it's funny because when people ask me to recommend them uh, Chuck Palahniuk books, I usually pick this one. Um, it's because I feel that it's a good entry place and it's not so reliant on satire and parody um, of, you know, of our America or the world as we know it right now that it, it's not as accessible. Um, a lot of people say Fight Club. I disagree with that. I, I think Damned is a good place to start, and or one other one, but we'll get to that. Next up on the list is the absolutely notorious, at number four, Haunted. And yes, this is one of the uh, glow-in-the-dark covers. By the way, I collect uh, Chuck Palahniuk books. I own all of his stuff, but only in the anchor version of his uh, paperbacks. I don't collect the hardcovers. I do have three hardcovers, um, but only because I found them at, at the thrift store uh, super cheap. I think one I found for a quarter, the other one I found for a dollar. But Haunted is an, an amazing collection of short fiction that is all tied together around a writer's retreat. So this group of authors get together and they, like I said, they go to a writer's retreat and they're all trying to tell each other stories. One of the uh, most infamous stories in this and the one of the things that Chuck Palahniuk is most known for is supposedly, I think they were plants in the audience, but um, supposedly that when when he read the short story Guts out loud um, during readings, people fainted, people got sick. I have been to some readings where that seems more gnarly and disturbing than what's in here. Any of the stories in here were told and, you know, it, it, nobody had a physical reaction. That's not to say that, you know, it couldn't have happened, but to have happened as much as Ponick says it did, I kind of doubt it. But the story is guts, um, and I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm not going to spoil any of these books, but uh, it revolves a boy getting trapped in a swimming pool. So, um, and that's, that's it. So, but uh, one of my favorite stories in here, and I can never remember what it's called, and I don't think they're split up by story, so it's not like I can go... Yeah, I can't just go to that one. But it's a story about the chef, I think, who goes out into the snow. Uh, that's one of my favorite stories in, in the collection. But all the, the stories um, kind of tie together thematically. Uh, and then there's a, an anchor story that holds the whole thing together. Um, and what's happening, I think what's happening to the people at the writer's retreat is the most interesting part of the story. The short stories are terrific. I mean, it wouldn't be at number four if they weren't. 
But the story within a story within a story idea is, I, I love that, and that's why I love this book. So yeah, that's number four. Next up is, uh, so I have not seen the film version yet. I want to do a book versus movie of it. But at number three, we have Choke. Uh, for the longest time, this was my favorite one. Uh, my favorite uh, Chuck Palahniuk book for the longest time. And then another one came about... Another one was pu uh, the part number two was published, and number one I finally got it round to reading. That's what bumped this out of the spot. But uh, I had read uh, I think Diary and Lullaby and Fight Club at this point. I think I might have even read Survivor, um, but this one uh, came out of nowhere for me. I read this, and as soon as I finished it. I picked it right back, well I didn't even put it down, I started it right back over again so I could look for clues because the twist ending was so fucking amazing. Um, it has one of the coolest, well, one of the best written um, reveals in all of literature, I think. Uh, the, the wording around, the, just, the, just the language, the verbiage, the way he tells the reveal at the end of the book just blows my mind and how well done it is. It's it's simple, yet it's very intricate, and it just comes out of nowhere. It's like there's no clues whatsoever. There are, but it feels like there's no clues whatsoever. And if we're, if we're going to talk about Fight Club at some point in time, I think it's a better twist than Fight Club. Um, if you've seen the movie, you read the book, I, I still feel that Choke, as far as twists are concerned, is Chuck Palahniuk's best twist. Um, I also love how weird and bizarre uh, the main character's job is. I mean, he's a, uh, a what is it, a Civil War or, uh, let's see, Revolutionary War, something like that, uh, reenactor. So <laughs> he has that. And then also on top of that, he chokes in restaurants, uh, makes people feel bad for him, so they'll give him money. Uh, it's very odd, very odd concept. And after the main reveal of the plot is wrapped up, and then it's like the final scene of the book. Every time I think about it, I chuckle, just like I did now. Every single time I think about it, I'm, I'm both disgusted and, and, and reduced to giggling or chuckling. Um, and for a book to have given me that wide of a range of emotions, uh, that's why it's number three. Okay, and number two is a book that either you're going to miss the point, either you're going to get the point, or you're going to miss it, and your enjoyment... <laughs> your enjoyment of the book is completely going to be based on whether or not you catch it, and that's Rant, an oil, an, o an oil, an oral biography. I think it's uh, an oral biography of Buster Casey. So this book is pretty simple on the surface. Uh, it's just like a series of interviews, and it's also one of the only books written like this that I've ever liked. Um, a piss. Epistolary, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sarah, help me. Um, but, uh, for the longest time, I called it epistolary. I don't know why, um, but I believe it's epistolary. And the the story is written in a set of interviews, um, just different people telling their stories of Buster Casey. And it's all about how he spread rabies throughout you know all the, all these people by by kissing them and whatnot. But that's not the story. That's not what's important. Um, what is important are the is the minutia, the the very small important details sprinkled throughout. And yes, just like most of Polonix's books, it does get to a point. It's it's so small that when, if you miss the twist, you're gonna miss the whole point of the book. And I think that's one of the reasons why he writes such short books, so that if you miss the 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 punchline, you know it's not gonna be a completely wasted effort. Now. Recently, I would say his past 10, not 10, I wouldn't say 10, probably his past 7 books um, have not been all that great. Uh, Damned and Doomed being the, the ones that, you know, the exceptions to that rule. It's probably actually the past 5 books. So Pygmy, Snuff, in fact I could easily do a top 5 worst uh, Chuck Palahniuk books. You, Pygmy, uh, Tell All, Snuff, um... What is it? Beautiful You is one of the worst books I have ever read in my entire life, period. Um, those are are horrible. I have not read Adjustment Day and I have not read The Fight Club 2. Um, but uh, anyways, I, I can't tell you what else I would put on the, the worst list because that would be a spoiler for, for number one. And we, we'll get there eventually. Um, another thing is uh, that now that I've got off on this tangent, I also want to bring up 
Chuck Palahniuk hasn't been paid in years, also, because his uh, agent, I think it was, his literary agent, uh, screwed him out of all of his money. He just, he, he t kept telling Chuck that, uh, that, you know, the books aren't sailing, selling, you don't have any royalties. Come to find out, the guy was just pocketing all of Chuck's uh, profits. It was a huge dick move. I'm sure you can just Google it. Uh, I guess Chuck Palahniuk getting ripped off for his royalties or whatever. Um, and I felt terrible because I had given the guy so much drama and so much grief. Uh, they were honest reviews, but I was wondering what had happened to him. It's like, why? It just doesn't feel like his heart is in it anymore. And I'll be damned. It wasn't because he wasn't selling. Uh, well, he thought he wasn't selling, and here this here this douchebag over here was just taking all of his money. It's, it's a tragic thing, and I hope I hope he gets back on his feet. And I hope he understands that you know the fans are there for him. I'm going to continue reading him. Um, I'm not giving up on him, especially not after finding out after Beautifully You. I almost did though, but I went ahead and bought Adjustment Day, so I got that one. I just haven't read it yet. Anyways, going on to my number one pick for the best Chuck Palahniuk book is, drumroll please, brrr, it, was on my, it was on my top 20 list, so if you saw that, you know what it is. It's Invisible Monsters, yeah, uh, which is a rad cover because you have the princess or you have the granny. I love optical illusions, man. Yeah, so you got granny and you got princess. That's really cool. Um... That's funny. I, I just realized that his, the, um, his name's not on the cover. So anyways, but uh, this one, he says, I think in the afterword or the forward, I can't remember which one, but he brings up, um, in fact, if there even is, maybe I read an article about it um, that said, yeah, it looks like maybe it was in a remix, uh, because there's another version of the book called Invisible Monsters Remix that I have not read yet. Uh, when I do my reread of all of Polonix's books, I will go back. I will actually read the remix version of this one. But uh, what I found fascinating about this, I think I read an article in which he said uh, that he was going for. He he writes all of his books with a certain style um, in mind. But like Pygmy, we all know what happened. If you read Pygmy, we all know what kind of style he was going for there. Um, but with Invisible Monsters, he was trying to recreate the style of like a Cosmopolitan, um, or an L, or a, a fashion magazine. He was trying to recreate that style of writing for a novel. And this is one of his longer books. Um, it's 300 pages. I know that sounds weird, but most of his books are anywhere from 200 to 220, 250, something like that. This is one of his longer books. Uh, Haunted is, I think, 400 pages, 400 some odd pages but only because it's uh, basically a short story collection. With this one, um, I will, there's, I, I know there's a twist, I just don't remember the twist. What sticks out the most for me is how well it was written. Um, not that Chuck's a bad writer, at any point in time, even Pygmy was consistent throughout with what he was trying to do, but how well he accomplished what he set out to do. Because after I was done with this, I went out and I checked out the, uh, I bought, uh, I think it was a co copy of Cosmopolitan, a copy of Elle, a copy of a, a couple other ones, um, all of the, the fashion magazines, uh, Vogue, um, I went and grabbed that, and maybe it's not just fashion magazines, I don't know what exactly they're called, but those types of magazines, and I, I, I read them, and I was shocked at how close that style was to reading one of those articles. Um, but there is a scene at the end of this book, I don't know if it's really a twist, but there is a scene at the end of this book um, that involves, the only thing I'm going to tell you is the color blue. Um, so if you read this book and you come across the ending and you see all this blue, then you know what I'm talking about. That scene has really stuck in my memory to the point of, you know, I, well, I, I just haven't been able to get rid of it. It's been stuck in my head ever since I read it the first time. I remember it so, so vividly. Um, another thing is the main character in here, if you've read my, I don't, I don't want to give any spoilers, but I guess this kind of is for my work. Um, if you haven't read my, my book, Fog Warning, and you plan to, then try it, uh, either scrub ahead, <laughs> this is the end of the video, so I guess you can just click away. Bye. Um, so, spoilers for my book, Fog Warning, kind of. Um, I got the idea for Fog Warning, what happens in the middle of that book. I got the idea from that, from this one, because of the main character. Um, the, the way the main character looks. So, I, I got that idea from, I got the idea from my book, 
from here. I wanted to do something similar. I wanted to do something so traumatic to a character to, uh, that you, you would think, how in the hell did they survive that? And that's what I wanted to do. So that's a little bit of you know, inside information for you people who are actually fans of my work and not just fans of the channel. Anywho, so that's my top five uh, Chuck Palahniuk books. And yeah, Fight Club's not here. I don't like Fight Club. In fact, if I were going to do top five uh, worst Chuck Palahniuk books, it would probably be number five. And then I would work my way up to number one. Number one would probably be would probably be Beautiful You. I mean, if, if we're honest, that book was just utterly atrocious. And yes, I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to riff off, not rip off, but riff on um, the, the, the rise of crap like Fifty Shades of Grey. Sorry, if you like those books, I think they're crap. Um, and Twilight and that kind of thing. The, the, erotic, the erotic books that were coming up, there are much better erotic books than Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, and not Twilight, but I always think Twilight when uh, when I think of Fifty Shades of Grey because it was originally Fifty Shades. It was originally Twilight fan fiction. So, um, but anyways, uh, he was trying to go after that uh, that trend is what he was writing a, a book for. He he follows trends in that he likes to he satire and parody of those trends. It's just it didn't work. It came off as instead of coming off as uh, satirical or smart or a parody or mockery, it just came off as stupid and silly. Um, none of the none of the cleverness was there and then the ending came about and I was just I just threw up my hands and I almost, I almost threw the book. Um, but yeah so that's my top five. Um, please leave your top five down there below. If you disagree with me, please be nice about it. Don't be a jerk. Be respectful. Um, you can tell me that you hate all of these books. That's fine. I don't mind. Just, you know, keep your opinions about me out of it and just talk about the books. But uh, if you like these books, let me know why you like them. Let's have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Hey, um, I have the next four weeks of Top 5 Friday planned, but if you would like to, on this video down there, since you hung out to the end, um, if you want to suggest something that I, well, you can just suggest anything. If I've done it, I'll just let you know I've done it and give you a link to it. But uh, if you would like to suggest an idea for Top 5 Friday, please leave um, your suggestions down there, and I will pin the, well, I will, I will keep this video in mind and I will come back here and just use this video as a resource um, to get all of your guys' suggestions. So let's use this video for a suggestion pit and drop them all down there in the comments below. But yeah, that's everything for this for this video. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.